Oh, praise the most high. So tonight's topic, tonight's topic is called rumors of war. Rumors of war. That's tonight's topic. Okay, let's open up with the book of Luke, Luke 21, verse 8. Luke 21 and verse 8. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 8. Read. And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. So now this is Christ teaching us. Christ is prophesying, like, listen. Um, he says, don't be deceived. Take heed that ye be not deceived, because many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. Because there's many, there's a race of people on this earth that came and said they are Christ. They taught a new Christ unto us. They taught us a new gospel unto us. You understand? Perverting the gospel of Christ. So that's what Christ is warning us about. Okay, watch this. Give me that in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse, verse 4. 2nd book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Read. Right. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we... The 2nd book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye mm -hmm. might well bear well, ye might, ye might well bear with him. So now, this is the Apostle Paul is teaching us, says, because if he that cometh and preaches another, another Jesus, because what Christ is talking about is what the Apostle Paul is making reference to, that there's going to be a race of people, that's why Christ says, many shall come in my name. It wasn't just one person, it was a race of people that came and taught another Jesus. You understand? That's the people that he's talking about. He that cometh preaches another Jesus. Who did that? The white man, the so-called white man, he's the one that came and taught white Jesus unto us. Okay? Whom we have not preached. The apostles never taught about a white Jesus with blue eyes, pink skin, and blonde hair. They never taught about that. Okay? It says, um, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, because this white Jesus comes with another spirit. What, what type of spirit is that? It's a seducing spirit. Okay? Christianity, the way this white Jesus comes with a seductive spirit. Okay? What is that seductive spirit? To go against the laws of God. That's what this white Jesus came with. That's why today our people, they don't want to keep God's commandments. Because of this white Jesus which came with another spirit a seducing spirit, okay? It says, which you have not received or another gospel which you have not accepted. This another gospel is called the doctrine of Christianity, okay? So why Jesus came with the spirit and came, came with a doctrine called Christianity, which is not in the Bible. That's how today our people are deceived. You understand? Go back to Luke 21, verse 8, again. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 8. Come on. And he said, take heed that ye be not deceived. Mm -hmm. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. So Christ is warning us, says, do not go after those that will come and, and say they are Christ and shall deceive many because the time draweth nigh. Meaning what? The time of my return draweth nigh. That's what Christ is teaching us. You understand? He says, don't go after them. What is he saying? Don't go after Christianity. Don't go after Christmas. The, the, the philosophies that come with Christianity and white Jesus. That goes into Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, so on and so forth. All these philosophies that are man-made. Christ says, don't go after them. Go ahead. Verse 9. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, 
but the end is not by and by. So Christ is saying, listen, he says, but when ye shall hear of wars and promotions, he says, when ye shall hear of wars, I mean, these things are going to happen in the future after I'm gone, okay? And commotions in the earth. He says, don't be terrified because these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by, meaning the end is not yet. But he says, these things before I return, these are the things that are going to happen on this earth before my return. Give me that in Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. Matthew 24, verse 6. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 6. Come on. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. But the end is by and by. So what is he saying? He says, ye shall hear of wars, okay? And rumors of wars. Meaning a rumor, meaning, yeah, it's, it's in the talks, but that, those, that war has not happened yet, okay? He says, you're going to hear of wars, you're going to hear of wars here and there, and rumors of wars, okay? He says, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The end is not yet. So it says, don't be deceived. Okay? That's what he said in the book of Luke. So go back to Luke 21 now, verse 9 again. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 9. Mm -hmm. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. So now when it says, when these things must first come to pass, it says, but the end is not by and by. So he's saying, listen, stay focused. Don't think it's the end. The end is not yet. These things must happen first. You understand? And these things are already taking place. Some are yet to happen, but the end is not yet. That's what he's saying. Okay? Watch this. Give, keep reading. Read verse 10 now. Come on. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So what we're reading here is what we read in verse 9. When it says, when he shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. Why? Because nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. These nations are going to what? They're going to go to war. There's going to be wars among these nations and there's going to be rumors of wars among these nations. Why? because it's going to be for our benefit. Then we shall know that it's time for us to get delivered when these nations go to war. Because there's one major war that is yet to happen, which is in the talks, which is the rumor of, okay, of that war. Watch this. Give me 2 Esther 15 verse 1. 2 Esther chapter 15 verse 1. Second book of Esther chapter 15 verse 1. Read. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people in the words of mm -hmm. prophecy. Go ahead. Which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. Read. And cause them to be written in paper. Mm -hmm. For they are faithful and true. So the Lord is saying, listen, uh, he's, he's speaking to Ezra. He says, make sure that you tell them. Make sure that you teach them. Speak. He says, speak. He says, what? Uh, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. So what we're going over is the words of prophecy. The Lord says they are faithful and they are true, meaning they will come to pass. Jump down to verse 20. Watch this. Remember what Christ said. He says there shall be wars and rumors of war. Nations shall go to, nations shall, shall be against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Okay, read verse 20. Second book of Esther, chapter 15, verse 20. Come on. Behold saith God, mm -hmm. I will call together all the kings of the earth to, to reverence me. Read. Which are from the rising of the sun, mm -hmm. from the south, from the east, and Lebanus, to turn themselves one against another and Come repay on. the things that they have done to them. That them is us. So the objective of the Most High God is to turn nations one against another. That's the, that's the plan of the Lord. 
The objective of the Most High God is to turn these nations once against another. That's why it says, ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. These wars and rumors of wars is for our benefit. That's why he says to turn themselves one against another and, and repay the things that they have done to them. The reason why the Lord is allowing these nations to go to war and the talks of the war to come, the war of Armageddon, is to pay the things that they've done to us. You understand? The slavery, the colonization, the forced migration. You understand? All of that is what is for us. Is the most High God says, I'm going to turning these nations against each other for your benefit. Go ahead. Verse 21. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, mm -hmm. so will I do also and recompense in their, bos in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord God. You see what God is saying? He says, he says what, how, what they've done back then and what they are still doing this day. He says, like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also, okay, and recompense in their bosom. The Lord says he's going to pay them back for what they've done to us. So what, that's why you see these nations going to war. You see these nations in conflict right now. Russia, Asia, China, the U.S., Iran, you understand? Ukraine. All these nations are in conflict right now before, for our benefit. You understand? Watch this. Now, give me second as a 16 verse 1. Remember what Christ said in Luke 21, verse 10. He says, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdoms. Read that. Second Esther 16, verse 1. Read that. Second book of Esther, chapter 16, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto, unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Come on. Get up yourselves with clothes of sack and hair. Mm -hmm. Beware your children and be sorry. For your destruction is at hand. You see what the Lord is prophesying? It says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Because who's in Egypt today? The Arabs, okay? Syria. All of that goes into what? Syria, because that's in Turkey and so forth. Who's there? Who's primarily there? The Arabs, okay? It says, Get up yourselves with, with clothes of sack, meaning sack cloth. And hey, bewail your children because they're going to be put to death when the Lord returns. And when these wars take place, they're also going to be put to death. And be sorry for your destruction is at hand. The Lord is telling them, I'm bringing forth judgment upon you. Go ahead, verse 3. Read. A sword is set upon you. And mm -hmm. who may turn it back? Nobody will turn this sword back. Meaning what? War. War. That's why it says, I'm going to turn these nations once against another. For us, for our benefit. Read verse 1 again. Second Esther 16. Se second book of Esther, chapter 16, verse 1. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. So now, I want to show you something. It says Babylon. Okay? It says, woe be unto thee, Babylon. Give me that in Psalms 137. Psalms 137, verse 7. Let's see who is Babylon. He says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Psalms 137, verse 7. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter, chapter 137, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. So now the subject matter here is about Edom, the children of Edom. Go ahead. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. So now Edom is, David is calling in the spirit Edom, the daughter of Babylon. You understand? So the Babylon that has been referenced here is talking about who? Is talk about America, okay? The children of Edom, Babylon. That's what he's making reference to. The Lord says, woe be unto them. Woe be unto Edom, because judgment is coming for them. You understand? Not just Edom only, but Asia. Go back to 2nd Esther 16, verse 1. Second book of 
Esdras chapter 16, verse 1. Woe be unto thee, Babylon, and Asia. Stop right there. Asia. Let's deal with that. Let's deal with Asia. Okay. He says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Give me second Esdras chapter 15, verse 46. Second Esdras 15, verse 46. Second book of Esdras, chapter six, chapter 15, verse 46. Read. And thou, Asia, that art partaker of the hope of Babylon, mm -hmm. and art the glory of her person. You see what the Bible is saying? So Ezra is prophesying that it says, Asia, they, part they are partakers of the hope of Babylon. Meaning Asia, they want to be like Babylon. They want to be like America. He says, and at the glory of a person. Meaning whatever Babylon is doing, Asia is doing it as well. They support them, okay? Technologically, they support them. They replicate, they do the things that they do. You understand? They are inspired by them. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, mm -hmm. because thou hast made thyself like unto, like unto her, and you hast decked. So the Lord is saying Asia has made themselves like unto Babylon, okay? Because they are inspired by Babylon. They are inspired by America, right? And has decked thy daughters in whoredom, mm. that they might please and glory in thy lovers. Go ahead. Which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. You see what he's saying? It says Asia has decked themselves, meaning the way they carry themselves, they carry themselves just like America does. That's why it says, thou hast decked thy daughters in whoredom that they might please and glory in thy lovers, which have always been a desire to commit whoredom with thee. You see that? So everything that America does is as Asia is doing it. Okay, go ahead. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. Mm -hmm. Mm. Therefore saith God. You see what he's saying? He says, thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. So everybody hates Babylon. And Asia is what? Is inspired by Babylon. They do everything that they do. Anything and everything they do, they follow behind that. You understand? Jump down to verse 50. Watch this. Second book of Esther, chapter 15, verse 50. Mm-hmm. And the glory of thy power shall be dried up as flour when the heat shall arise that is sent over thee. Meaning what? Destruction. Judgment is coming for them. Give me that in Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. This is, um, this is now, this is Balaam, okay? Balaam is being showed something here which Moses had to record. This is, what, this is what the Lord showed Balaam, what he will do to Israel. And he showed Balaam, okay, what Israel is going to look like in the last days when we come back, when the Lord returns. Watch this. Numbers 24, verse 17. The book of Numbers, chapter 24, verse 17. Read. I shall see him, but not now. Now, hold on. It says, I shall see him, but not now. Let's talk about who? The Messiah. He says he's going to see the Messiah, but not now. Go ahead. I shall behold him, but not now. He says, I'm going to behold him, but not now. Meaning I'm not going to be close to him, but I will see him. Read. There shall come a star out of Jacob, mm. and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Come on. And shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. So now when judgment and destruction comes, the Lord says he will do what? He says he's going to smite the corners of Moab, that's China, and destroy all the children of Sheth, the deaf. So what is he saying? It says Asia, because they, they, they are partaking, you understand, in the hope of Babylon, the Lord says they are not going to be guiltless. The Lord says he's going to punish them for what they've done to us. You understand? Watch this. Now, let's look at all the list of the countries that are in Asia, okay? The list of Asian countries. Let's see what makes up Asia. Watch this. Okay, so um, read that. How many countries in Asia? 
how many countries in Asia? Mm -hmm. Countries in Asia, 48. Okay, read that, the paragraph. There are 48 countries in Asia today, according to the United Nations. Read. The full list is shown in the table below with current population and sub-region based on the United Nations official statistics. Okay, so now um, let's just read that. I want you to read all these, um, these countries that are part of Asia. Because remember it says, will be unto you, Babylon and Asia. Okay, read that. China, India. India. So you see that? China. So China is part of Asia. That's more where, that's what we read in Numbers 24, verse 17. Go ahead. India. Mm. Indonesia. Pakistan. Mm. Bangladesh. Come on. Japan. That's Amon. Read. Philippines. Mm -hmm. Vietnam. Come on. Turkey. That's Syria. Iran. Iran, go ahead. Thailand. Hmm. Myanmar. Go ahead. South Korea. I think that's where Kim Jong-un, right? Go ahead. Iraq. Mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Come on. Saudi Arabia. Ray. Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. Malaysia. Yemen. Remember, all these nations that were involved in our captivity. Don't get it twisted. Go ahead. Nepal. Mm. North Korea. Come on. Sri Lanka. Kazakhstan. Syria. Cambodia. Jordan. Mm. Azerbaijan. United Arab Emirates. So that's in Western Asia. Come on. Tajikistan, mm. Israel, mm. Laos, Lebanon. Libanus, that's Libanus right there. Go ahead. Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, Kyrgyzstan. Go ahead. Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan. Go ahead. Singapore. Mm -hmm. Oman. State of Palestine. Go ahead. Kuwait. Mm. Georgia. Mongolia. Come on. Armenia. Qatar. Bahrain. Mm. Timor Leste. Cyprus. Bhutan. Maldives. Brunei. So all these nations, all these countries that you see here, all these countries, they make up Asia. So the Lord is saying all these countries that you see here, they are primarily where in the East. Okay. Primarily they are in the they are in the East, primarily. The Lord says He's going to destroy these nations. Watch this. Go back to where was that? Um, second Ezra. Go back to Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 1 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 1. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, mm -hmm. Egypt and Syria. So you see what the Lord is saying? Now, Syria is part of Asia, okay? But the Lord is letting you know, if all the countries that are under Asia, the Lord says he's going to destroy them. He says, woe be unto thee. Babylon, that's America, and Asia. Will be unto the Egypt, because who's in Egypt today? You've got the Arabs up in there, and Syria. That's also what the Arabs too. Okay. The Lord says He's going to destroy them. Go ahead. Gird up yourselves with clothes of sack and hair. Mm -hmm. Bewail your children, and be sorry for your destruction is at hand. Because your destruction is at hand, Ray. A sword is set is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? Nobody will turn this sword back. Come on. A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? 
This fire is going to be caused by the sword, which is the missiles, nuclear war. You understand? That's why it says wars and rumors of wars, because the Lord is going to bring forth judgment on them. So all these nations that we read about under Asia, they are primarily in the east. Watch this. Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 28. 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 28. Read that. 2nd book of Esther, chapter 15, verse 28. Come on. Behold an horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Read that again. 2nd book of Esther, chapter 15, verse 28. Go ahead. Behold an horrible vision. Mm. And the appearance thereof from the east. Now, I want to show you something with this. Now, you see that part what we read in 2nd Ezra 16 when it says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia, and woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. So that Egypt is also twofold, goes into spiritual Egypt, which is where we are now. Okay. But it also goes into where the Arabs are occupied because they kicked the Hamites out. You understand? Now they are occupying the territory of the Hamites, okay, the Philistines, because that's why now the Arabs, they call themselves Palestinians, because it comes from the word Philistine. So they changed that name to Palestine, but it's actually Philistine. So when they took over that land, they call themselves Palestinians, okay? So what this is going into here is going into what is is twofold goes into spiritual Egypt. It also goes into what the Palestinians over there. Okay, now read that again. Second Esther fifteen. Read verse twenty eight again. Second book of Esther, chapter fifteen, verse twenty eight. Read. Behold, an horrible vision, and the appearance mm -hmm. thereof from the east. It says, "Behold, an horrible vision, and the appearance thereof from the east." This goes into the United Arab Emir Emirates. We read about it. It is part of Asia. So when it says the, from the east, is going into Asia, okay? Which includes the United Arab Emirates, when you understand, which includes all those Palestinian countries and so forth, Iran, Bahrain, Afghanistan, Iraq. It includes all of those countries that we read. Go ahead. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots. So the nations of the dragons of Arabia. So it's letting you know the Arabs, they're going to what? They're going to prepare themselves for war. That's what he's telling you right there. Shall come out with many chariots, meaning they are what? They are fighter planes. Come on. And the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth. They're going to be everywhere during that time, in that area, in that land, where where war is going to pop off, World War Three. Go ahead. That all they which hear them may fear and tremble. And the reason why the, the nations are going to fear and tremble when they see the dragon, you understand, the nations of the dragon of Arabia, the, the people are going to, they're going to be trembling because they are going, they are, they are at war. It's because of this right here. Give me that in Genesis 16. Because the Lord prophesied about how Ishmael was going to be in these last days. That's why America is they are busy trying to shut down any nuclear program that Iran is pushing out. You understand? And they are, they are dividing them. They are dividing these Arab states. They are dividing these Arab nations because they know if they come together, listen, it's a wrap. Watch this. Give me that in Genesis 16. Okay, Genesis chapter 16 and verse 4. The book of Genesis. Chapter 16, verse 4. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. So now this is after um, Sarah and Abraham tried for a child and they could not conceive because it wasn't time. And so Sarah, our foremother, she asked that our forefather Abraham, you know, go in unto Hagar, their the, uh, they are handmade, you understand, as to be used as a surrogate for a child. When she conceived, she bare a child. Watch this. Jump down to verse 17. The book of Genesis, chapter 16. 
You know what? Let's just get to the point. Jump down to verse 11. The book of Genesis chapter 16, verse 11. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, mm -hmm. because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. So Ishmael means my affliction. So Ishmael is the child that Hagar gave birth to. Go ahead. And he will be a wild man. He will be a what? And he will be a wild man. He says, Ishmael is going to be a wild man. You see, the Arabs, they are so wild. You see the stuff they do? They be stripping bombs to themselves and blowing themselves to hell and back. Yeah, that's how wild they are. So imagine if they have nuclear capability. What do you think they're going to do? So that's why it's, it's letting you know, it says, when the people see, they are going to fear and tremble. Why? Because the nations know the type of spirit that the Lord put in Ishmael. America knows that. That's why they've been doing everything and anything and everything to divide these Arab nations, that they don't get along. You understand? That's why they killed Qasem Suleimani, because what, what he was doing, he was gathering all these Arab nations together to be as one. And they realized that we have a problem here. You understand? OK, go ahead. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. You see that? He says his hand will be against every man. Meaning what? He's not going to, he doesn't care. So you see all these, uh, oh, my friend, the body cars here and all of that. When it's time for war, you really going to see what they have in those puzzle shops. Go ahead. And every man's hand against him. Mm. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That's why America is trying to divide the, these Arab nations. He says, Ishmael will dwell in the presence of all, not some, all his brethren. Meaning the Arab nations, they were all going to be what? They're all going to dwell among themselves. That's why Esau is doing his best to try to divide them. He, 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 he's dividing them through politics. He's dividing them through giving them weapons to fight against themselves and so on and so forth. So, but the Lord is prophesying that Ishmael will dwell among the presence of all his brethren. That's prophecy. Iso cannot do about, can, he, he will try, but he's not going to go against this prophecy. Go back to 2nd Genesis 15, okay, verse 29. 2nd book of Esther, chapter 15, verse 29. Go ahead. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth. Mm -hmm. that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. Because Ishmael will be a wild man. Go ahead. Also, the Carmenians raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild, bo as the wild boars of the wood. So the Carmenians, that, hold on. The Carmenians, that's the Iranians. Is it the Iranians, they will be raging in wrath. Because the wrath of the Carmenians was kindled by who? Was kindled by Donald Trump. When Donald Trump launched a drone strike against Qasem Soleimani, you understand? Iran's top military general. Yes, they kindled, they kindled fire against them. He kindled that wrath. You understand? He kindled that rage in the Iranians. Now, Iran just sent a, uh, just sent a warning to US and Israel that if they make one wrong move, they're gonna strike. Okay, read that again. Second book of Esther, chapter 15, verse 30. Mm -hmm. Also the Carmenians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. Go ahead. And with great power shall they come. With great power, meaning they're gonna have what? They're gonna have military might. Where will they get the power from? Remember, Iran is building nuclear missiles. Iran has got a nuclear program. You understand? That's why America made sure that they killed um, Iran's top military general and Iran's top nuclear scientist, Moshe Fagrizadeh. But that's not going to stop Iran because it's already prophesied that, guess what? They're going to build that nuclear program and they are going to succeed. Okay, come on. 
and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. Of what? Of take. Okay, take that goes into Iraq. Okay, watch this. Because it says what? It says, raging in red shall go forth as the wild bows of the wood, and with great power shall they come. Because America, like I said, they are trying to do what? They are trying to, uh, to stop uh, Iran from building nuclear, nuclear weapons. They're not going to be able to stop that. Give me that in Jeremiah 51. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse, uh, verse 1. Jeremiah 51 verse 1. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and, it, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that, ri that rise up against me. A destroying wind. A destroying wind. So the Lord says he's going to raise against Babylon. A destroying wind. Okay, come on. And will send unto Babylon fanners that mm -hmm. shall fan her. Go ahead. And shall empty her land. Meaning they're going to bomb America. Go ahead. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. Meaning these nations are going to turn against America, including who? Including a nation that the Lord will raise up against Babylon. Okay. Because this is the Chameleons will rage in red. Go ahead. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his barrel, bend his bow. No, no. Read that again. Read it right. Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. The archer bend his bow, going into what? The bow goes into the missile. Meaning this nation that the Lord will raise against Babylon, they'll have nuclear, they will have, they will have nuclear capability. Go ahead. Thus, the slain shall fall in the land of the, of the Chaldeans. No, no. And no, read verse 3 again, because you skipped some things there. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 3. Read. Really? Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. Mm -hmm. And against him that lifted himself up in his, in his brigandine. Brigandine. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And spare ye not her young men. Destroy ye utterly all her host, her host. All her host. The host is going into his military. Okay, it says destroy all her host. Watch this. Jump down to verse 10. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 10. Go ahead. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Mm -hmm. Come and let us declare in Zion the work, the work of the Lord our God. That's what we are doing right now. Come on, verse 11. Make bright the arrows. Mm -hmm. Gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. That's it right there. He says, the Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings. So it's not just one. It says, the kings of the Medes. That's the Carmenians. That's the Persians. Okay? That's Iran. You understand? That's the Arabs. You understand? That's all that. That's Ishmael and all his brethren. There is this is Ishmael and all his brethren. Afghanistan, I, the, I, the I, Iraqis, and so forth. All these nations, these Arab nations, the law says he's gonna raise up the kings, he's gonna raise up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. Primarily Iran, because not only did they kill the top military. Uh, general, they kill the top military. They, they they kill the top nuclear scientists. Okay, so you think they've forgotten about that? No, and they're not gonna stop. Babe. They are still gonna build these nuclear these nuclear missiles. Why? Because it's written here. Where are they gonna get the the the? Where how are they gonna be able to send missiles into America to ban it? Because they will have nuclear capability. Go ahead. For his device is against Babylon. Mm -hmm. to destroy it really? because it is the vengeance of the Lord, mm -hmm. the vengeance of his temple. You see what the Lord is saying? The Lord is saying, listen, 
This is the venge is the venge is what is as for is what is as for his device is against Babylon to destroy. So the most high God is going to use the means. You understand? He's going to use the means. So whatever America is trying to do, whatever the EU is trying to do, is not going to work. That's what the Lord is trying to teach us here. Whatever they are trying to do is not going to work because the vengeance of the Lord is upon them. So they are not going to do anything. Okay? So go back to 2nd Esdras. 2nd Esdras, chapter 15, verse 30 again. 2nd book of Esdras, chapter 15, verse 30. Go ahead. Also the Carmenians, raging in wrath, shall mm. go forth as the wild boars of the wood. And with great power shall they come, come and do battle with them, and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. Because what? Because of warfare. Go ahead. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand. Mm -hmm. Remembering their nature. Stop right there. You see, well, that's what we read in Genesis 16, verse 11. It says what? Because remember, it says, Ishmael shall be a wild man. That's his nature. That's how the Lord made him. And the, guess what? America knows that. I mean, that's why they are always, they are painting the Arabs in a negative light. Why? Because why? They, they want everybody to be against the Arabs because they know the type of nature that the Lord put in Ishmael is going to be wild. That's why it says they are going to remember their nature. They are going to remember how the Lord made them. Okay. Read. And if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together in great power to persecute them. So if the Lord is saying they're going to remember their nature, not only that, they are going to what? They are going to come together as one. That's what the Lord is saying. But America is trying to prevent that. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Understand that. Watch this. Mm. Our top story this hour, Iran's nuclear talks with world powers resumed in Vienna, but, charges of a but chances of a return to the 2015 deal through diplomacy are fading away. Now, an Iranian military official has warned that the West of paying a heavy price after reports claim that U.S. and Israel are set to hold military drills to prepare for possible strike on Iran's nuclear facilities. You see that? So now Israel is coming together with the U.S., to what? To destroy uh, Iran's nuclear facility. That's what they are doing. They are coming together now to do that. They want to what? They want to destroy Iran's nuclear facility. They are starting a war. <clears throat> Excuse me. The war has started already when they killed Amer uh, Iran's top military general and Iran's top nuclear scientist. Because Iran is resumed, is they are continuing their nuclear program because they backed out of the nuclear deal which America broke during the time of Donald Trump. You understand? They broke that deal. So Joe Biden tried to go back to that deal and so forth. But you know, Iran is no longer is no longer playing the is no longer playing anymore. So they are continuing their nuclear in case America backs down again. So now because of that because Iran wants to continue their nuclear, uh, their nuclear program, you see what they are trying to do now? They want to come together to go and destroy um, Iran's nuclear facility. A Twitter handle affiliated with Iran's top security body tweeted, I'm quoting here, providing conditions for military commanders to test Iranian missiles with real targets will cost the aggressors a heavy price. Israel and U.S. have discussed the destruction of Iran's nuclear sites in case the talks fail. Israel's Defense Minister Benny Gantz says he has introduced Israeli defense forces to prepare to strike Iran, and Gantz also shared a timeline. So you see what they are saying? So this is, uh, this is the Israelis now. It says there is room for international pressure, political and economic and also military, in order to convince Iran to stop its fantasies about a nuclear program. No, this is not a fantasy. This is real. It's biblical fact. It's, a, it's biblical truth because we read in Jeremiah that the Lord is going to stir up the, the, the minds of the kings of the Medes to send what? To bomb, to send nuclear, nuclear war, war, warheads into, into America. Okay? 
or any country that does business with America, that includes what? Or any country that is protect, that is very close to America, that America is protecting. Which country is that? Israel. You understand? Israel, those bastards over there in our land. So this, this Benny Gans, he thinks this is a fantasy. No, this is not a fantasy at all. For when such an attack might take place with his U.S. counterparts. Western powers are losing patience as Vienna talks have failed to break the deadlock. Meanwhile, Israeli Defense Minister says that his country will do everything to ensure that Iran would not be able to produce a nuclear weapon. However, Iran has denied ambitions of acquiring such a nuclear weapon. The state... But he says, Iran warns, Iran is warning Israel and the United States. So, he says, if any, any wrong move, he says, Iran, he says, we want to strike. They must strike, of course. The is in the backdrop of a meeting between the United States and the Western counterparts. It discussed the 2015 nuclear deal and the way forward and was held on the eve of the G7 foreign ministers' meeting. Germany, France, the United Kingdom were part of this meet. Western officials feel there is little time left before the 2015 nuclear deal is damaged beyond repair. West has accused Iran of playing for time while advancing its nuclear program. Now, Germany's foreign ministers warned that time was running out for the nuclear deal revival. These are the seventh round of talks between Iran and the West. Iran had agreed to continue talks from where they left off in June, but Tehran has maintained its hardline stance. The chair of the negotiations called it a difficult endeavor. The 2015 nuclear deal was abandoned by Donald Trump in 2018. You see what Iran is saying? Iran says enemies will have to pay a heavy price. What praise to the most I've got for that thing? It says reports drills to strike Iran nuke sites. So they wanna they wanna destroy all these all Iranian nuclear sites, you understand? So that Iran does not Iran does not build any nuclear nuclear weapons and so forth. Because America is acting like the police of the world. They want to police every country on how they must conduct themselves and how what type of weapons they build and so forth. But America has nuclear weapons. They've got nuclear weapons, but they don't want any other country to have them. You know why? Because America knows what's coming. America knows that Christ is coming back. They know the Black Messiah is going to crack the sky. So they don't want all these nations to have nuclear weapons because when the Lord, before the Lord returns, all these nations are going to turn against America. They want to fight against America. America knows that thing. The 2015 nuclear deal was abandoned by Donald Trump in 2018. Sanctions levied on Iran by U.S., European Union and the United Nations. Iran so Donald Trump, he, he pulled out of that nuclear deal and he put sanctions on Iran. Okay. And limited its nuclear program in return for relief from these sanctions and wants checks and measures in case the United States decides to withdraw from the deal again. Okay, so what's happening is that it says the G7 countries is there to meet, you understand, to discuss the nuclear deal that, that needs to be revived that was cancelled in, in June. So they need to revive it again. But while they are discussing to re the revival of that nuclear deal, Iran is continuing to build their nuclear weapons, which they should, because it's written in the Bible. But watch this. Let's see who are those G7 countries. Let's see what is the G summit in the first place, because maybe some of you might not. The G7 summit. The G7 summit. Let's You've see. probably heard about the G7 summit. You know, the group of world leaders that meet every year to discuss big issues and pose for an obligatory photo op. But what about the G8 and G20? Is there a difference? And do they really matter? In short, yes. The G7 actually started as G6, and for a little while, it was G8. This is the group that talks about the problems in the world at large. So, these people, their job is to talk about the, the world, the problems that exist in the world. Guess who's making sure that there's problems in the world? America. 
Americans, they are the main ones that make sure that there's problems in the world. Wherever America goes, there's always problems. Okay, if I continue with that, watch this. Give me that in, um, give me about two, so I can prove what I'm saying. Wherever America goes, there's always desolation and destruction, poverty, okay, chaos, because that's what America does. They destroy, they destroy other countries. That's their job. Give me that in Habakkuk chapter two. Okay, Habakkuk chapter two, verse four. Watch this. The book of Habakkuk, book of Habakkuk chapter two, chapter two, verse four. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, mm -hmm. but the just shall live by his faith. He says, the soul that is lifted up in Esau, he says, is not upright in him. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine. Because he transgresses by lies. By lies. He lies to these other countries. He promises that he's, gonna, he's bringing world peace. But he's not bringing no world peace. You understand? He's going to hold countries hostage. Go ahead. He is a proud man. Mm -hmm. neither keepeth at home. You see that thing? They are in everybody's land, policing other countries, holding countries captives, holding countries hostage. You understand? He says they don't keep at home. They are in everybody's land. That's why America has military bases in, e in every country in the earth. Go ahead. Who enlargeth his desire as hell. You see that thing? They enlarge their desire as hell. Meaning what? Whatever they desire, whatever they desire, wherever it is, in which, which whatever country, once they get it, they're going to leave that country in a, in a hellish state, in a destroyed state. Look at the continent of Africa. You understand? Go ahead. And as is death. And is as death. The countries are destroyed, you understand, economically. The countries are destroyed. The currency is garbage. Read. And is as death and cannot be satisfied. They are not satisfied. They're going to destroy the country until there's nothing left. The reason why they cannot leave the continent is because they cannot finish the resources that are on this continent. Read. But gathereth unto him all nations mm. and heapeth unto him all people. You see what they do? After they rob and steal, they murder, they take everything of the countries they rob, they go back to their countries, then they bring, they, they call, they say, no, you know, come to America, come to Europe, come to England and so forth. That's what they do. You understand? But these nations that America robs, these nations that America destroys, these nations that America left in an impoverished state, they are going to pay for what they've done because the Bible says so. Next verse, read. Shall not all these take up a parable against him? Shall not all these nations that America destroys, are they not going to take up a, par a parable against America? Yes. Go ahead. And a taunting proverb against him. And Amen. say, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. Because America and Europe, they increase the things that don't belong to them. The gold, the diamond, the platinum, all these mineral resources, the, the cocoa, the rice, the tea, you understand? All of these minerals, whether it's the gold, the diamond, or whether it's the fruits and veggies, they increase those things that are not theirs. Okay, come on. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with the clay. You see that thing? It says what? It says they laid in himself with thick clay because nobody knows that America is the one that's really behind all these evils that are happening on this earth. Just like when the Greeks took over and first Maccabees, it says evils were multiplied in the earth. That's the same thing today. America's running the world. That's why there's so much evil on this earth. Okay. And the G7 is part of that evil. While the G20, a newer and bigger group of leaders, deals mostly with money, or economic cooperation. Confused? Don't be. Let's go back to the start. After the first oil shock of the 1970s, economies across the world were suffering, and global leaders wanted to do something about it. So a group of government officials decided to meet up and figure things out. So think about it. 
So when the nations did not have gas, that's America and all of that, what did they do? Where did they go to get access to the gas and so forth? They came to the continent. They developed, they they, they to build more gas pipelines to get the oil from Iraq, Iran, South America, South Af I mean, not South Africa, but the African continent, the so-called Middle East, because there's a lot of slime pits over there in the Middle East, okay? Get that in Genesis 14. When our forefather Abraham went to war with the five kings, watch this, Genesis chapter 14 and verse 10. The book of Genesis chapter 14, verse 10. Read. And the veil of Sidim was full of slime pits. You see that slime pits, that goes into petroleum. Slime pits goes into petroleum, goes into oil. Okay, come on. And the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there. And they that remained fled to the mountain. That's why they cannot leave the so-called Middle East because they know what's down there. Slime pits, okay? Petroleum, oil, gas, okay? That's why George W. Bush had to wage war in Iraq and Afghanistan because of the oil, because of the opium. Okay, that grows over there. That's the only reason why the they, they, George Bush, George w, George w. Bush was over there. Okay. And when Obama became the president, they sent Obama to Nigeria because they wanted the oil. But they wanted, uh, um, Nigeria wanted help with Boko Haram. They said, no, we can, they said, we can help you with Boko Haram, but you must accept same sex relations in your country will help you with Boko Haram and not only that they'll they'll want to have access to the oil in Nigeria you know they said no all praises to the most I believe. first it was just six countries France Germany Italy Japan the US and the UK so these are the G6 countries okay G7 the seventh country is going to be added in, in in just a few but it's France Germany Italy Okay, Japan, United States, United Kingdom, right? The next year, Canada joined and G7 was formed. In 1998, Russia joined the club, making it the G8. But it was kicked out in 2014 after its annexation of Crimea. So now we're back to G7. So after um, Russia annexed Crimea, they kicked Russia out of G7 which was the G8, now is the main, the G7, okay? The countries and attendants typically discuss broad issues like climate change, jobs... Stop right there. They, they discuss climate change, future jobs, okay, jobs... ...of the future and women's empowerment. You see that? Look at this. They discuss climate change, jobs, women empowerment. All of this, this is democracy. That's what they are explaining. They are just, that's what they stand for. The G7 countries, they stand for democracy and robbing of other countries and their wealth. Okay, watch this. I'm going to show you something with that. It says climate change, jobs, Women's empowerment, right? Okay, read that, climate. The definition of climate. Go ahead. The weather conditions prevailing in an area in general or over a long period. So, I mean, think about it like this, right? Why would um, these nations said, said to discuss weather? I mean, let's think now. Who does that? Who actually sits down to discuss weather? Because they don't control the weather. The Lord does. The Mosa is the one that controls the weather. Watch this. Give me the book. Okay. Give me the three holy children. 
Give me the three holy children and verse, verse 36. Three holy children, verse 36. Mm -hmm. Oh, all ye waters that be above the heaven. No, no, yes. what verse you had? No, no, verse, verse, verse 36. Start at verse 35, in fact, because you're reading verse 38. Read verse 35. Three holy children. Oh, Oh, all you works of the Lord. Verse, call the call the verse. Come on, stay stay with me. Verse thirty five. The song of the three holy children. Verse thirty five. Mm -hmm. Oh, all you works of the Lord. Bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. So now he says, all ye works of the Lord, works of the Lord, works of the Lord. Okay, now watch this. Jump, read verse 36 now. Go ahead. O ye heavens, bless ye the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise and exalt him above all forever. So now it says the heavens must bless the Lord, right? Jump down to verse 38. O all ye waters that be above heaven, mm -hmm. bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. So now he says the heavens must bless the Lord. The waters above the heavens must bless the Lord. Jump down to verse 40. O sun and moon, bless ye the Lord. Really? Praise, praise and exalt him above all forever. Jump down to verse 42 now. Oh, every shower, or oh, every shower and dew. Mm -hmm. Bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. So how do they do that? How does the sun and the moon bless the Lord? They shine. Okay. It says, oh, every shower. It says, every shower. Okay. It says, every shower and dew. Bless ye the Lord. The showers that come from the clouds. And they do, because the showers, it will be everywhere. That's why it says they do. Bless ye the Lord. Verse 43, come on. Oh, all ye winds, bless ye the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Because how does the wind bless the Lord? It blows on the earth. Okay. Jump down to verse 45. Oh, ye winter and summer. Mm-hmm. Bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Jump down to verse 51 now. Watch this. O ye lightnings and clouds. Mm. Bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. So now all of these things, they happen naturally. The Lord is the one that controls all of these. And what they do upon this earth, the way they were designed to, that's how they bless the Lord. So there's no way, think about it. There's no way that these, these leaders of the earth will sit down to discuss them. That makes sense? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, watch this. Read the third definition of the word climate. The definition of climate. Mm -hmm. The prevailing trend of public opinion or mm. of another aspect of life. You see that that one right there, that's what they're discussing. They are not discussing about the rain and the lightning. They are not discussing about that. It says, read that part again. The definition of climate. Mm -hmm. The prevailing trend of public opinion or of another aspect of life. So what they discuss when they say climate change, they are discussing what? The prevailing trend of public opinion or of another aspect of life. So, but that, that, that aspect of life does not favor the 12 tribes of Israel. So they are discussing public opinion, how to what, how to control the minds of the people. You see that part right there, read that. 
spirit. They changing the spirits of the people. They are corrupting the, the minds of the people. That's what they're talking about when they say climate change. Read that. Attitude. Attitude. When they say climate change, they are not talking about weather. They are not talking about lightning and rain. No. They are talking about what? The mind, how to control the minds of the public and how to control their spirits and their attitude towards everything that they say. You understand? That's why you hear people be saying the same things over and over. You ask, where, where are they hearing this stuff from? Television. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Exodus 1. Because that's what Pharaoh, Pharaoh did there. When they took over, the king that, the, the Pharaoh that took over that knew not Joseph, here's what they did. Give me that in uh, Exodus chapter 1. Okay. Exodus 1, verse 10. Start of verse 9. You know what? Start of verse 8. We're going to read down. This is Amos the first. Amos the first is the one that said, no, we need to change this. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Read. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, mm -hmm. which knew not Joseph. That's Amos the first. Read. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. That's how they discuss us this day. That's their, that's their discussions. Okay, come on. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them. You see that you see that part right there? It says, Come on, let us deal wisely with them. How did they deal wisely with us back then? They gave us jobs. They set our people over us to increase the hatred. Today they are doing the same thing. They are dealing wisely with us. You understand? With the social media, with the Christian church, with the politics, with the technology, you understand? With the social media. That's how they are dealing wisely with us. Okay, they did it back then, they are doing it today to control the minds of the people, how they think, their attitude, their demeanor, their thought process. You understand? That's why, but they call it climate change. It's not talking about weather. They are not talking about that. You understand? That is what we're reading here. Okay. Okay. Mm. However, the G7 is an informal group, so what's said during meetings isn't binding. They're more of an opportunity for leaders to exchange ideas. But there are some other notable global powers missing from the G7 table, like China and India, which is... So China and India, they are missing from the G7 table. No, it's not an accident, it's by design. I'm going to show you that next. Had some to say the group isn't representative of the world powers at large. Which brings us to this, a bigger, more inclusive group of world powers. The G20 got its official start in 1999 after a series of global financial crises. All of the G7 countries and Russia were invited, along with financial leaders from another 11 countries and the EU. As of 2018, G20's members represent 85% of global economic output. But some critics still see it as unrepresentative of the world's population. So G7 is mainly politics. It was now I wanted, I wanted to come to this only point. called G You see the symbol of G7? Anybody notice that? Yes, sir. You yes, see sir. That? The eagle. So G7, guess who's sitting on top? America. Okay, America. Don't be worried when he says, says France, Germany. Mm -mm. America is the one that's running this whole thing. That's why it's got the symbol of the eagle right there. Remember the G7 goes into what? It, it also goes into those nations that, took, that we read about in, in Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 12. Okay. He ate when Russia was involved. The G20 is mainly money, and it's made up of way more countries. But if there's one thing you can count on from both summits, it's a good old-fashioned family photo. Mm. It's a good old-fashioned family photo. Because you've got Asia, which partakes in the hope of Babylon. They are all working together against who? Against the 12 tribes of Israel. 
Understand it. The next video, because, let me go to the next video, because I wanna show you these G7 countries regarding what Russia, um, because Russia wants to invade Ukraine. Watch this. Mm. So these are the, all the, the G7 countries, they are warning Russia, if Russia invades Ukraine. Massive consequences. That's the united promise from G7 foreign ministers to Russia if it invades Ukraine. They met in Liverpool over the weekend and also called on Iran to make concessions in negotiations over its nuclear program. So not only do they, do, do, are they warning Russia, invade, uh, Russia's promised invasion to Ukraine, but they want Iran to stop its nuclear program. So which one do they want? Hmm? And everyone looking this way. A united front from British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss and her counterparts from Germany, France, the US, Italy, Canada and Japan. Missing from the group of the world's largest economies since its 2014 annexation of Crimea is Russia, now the centre of a new conflict. Russia's denials it plans to attack its neighbour Ukraine, despite a massive troop build-up on its border, have not reassured the G7 ministers. Truss warned Moscow that any aggression would be a strategic mistake. And what we've shown this weekend is that the world's largest economies are united. We've sent a powerful signal to our adversaries and our allies. We've been clear that any incursion by Russia into Ukraine would have massive consequences for which there would be a severe cost. The ministers also urged Tehran to make concessions to rescue talks aimed at resurrecting the 2015 nuclear deal. The so-called joint plan of action restricted Iran's nuclear program in return for the lifting of US sanctions. Um, I'm going to start off. This is the last chance for Iran to come to the negotiating table. You see what they are saying now? Now they are threatening Iran because they do they they don't want Iran to build nuclear program and they want Iran to go back to that nuclear deal that Donald Trump pulled, Donald Trump pulled out of. So Iran is saying, no, we don't want the same debacle to happen again. So we're going to continue. They, are, they don't want to be specific about what are those consequences that they are talking about. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see the consequences. One second. I was very straightforward. There were no minced words. It was polite, I mean, very clear. If in fact he invades Ukraine, there will be severe consequences. Severe consequences. Economic consequences like none he's ever seen. You see that? Economic consequences. Hmm. Seen or ever have been seen in terms of being imposed. He knows his immediate response was he understood that. And I indicated that I knew he would respond, but beyond that, if in fact we would probably also be required to reinforce our, our presence in NATO countries to reassure particularly those in the Eastern Front. In addition to that, I made it clear that we would provide the defensive capability to the uh, Ukrainians as well. The good news is, the good news, the positive news is that thus far our teams have been in constant contact we hope by Friday we're going to be able to stay and announce to you that we're having meetings at a higher level, not just with us, but with at least four of our major NATO allies and Russia to discuss the future of Russia's concerns relative to NATO writ large and whether or not we can work out any accommodations as it relates to bringing down the temperature along the Eastern Front major economic consequences for Russia if they move against Ukraine. Give me that in First Maccabees, okay? Give me First Maccabees 8. First Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 1. Watch this. First book of Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 1. Come on. Now Judas 
had heard of the fame of the Romans, mm -hmm. that they were mighty and valiant men, right. and such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them, mm -hmm. and make a league of amity with all that came unto them. So now Rome, they made friends with those that agreed with them. When Rome was coming into power and so forth, it says what? It says, and such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them. So the countries that joined themselves unto Rome, it says Rome made league with them. You understand? But guess what? Those that did not, what did Rome do? Jump down to verse 4. Okay. First book of Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And that by their policy and patience, they had conquered all that place, though it were very far from them, and the kings also that came against them from the uttermost part of the earth, till they had discomforted them. Come on. And given, and given them a great overthrow, so that the rest did give them tribute, so that the rest did give them tribute every year. You see what Rome did? So the countries that did not join, lovingly join themselves unto them, it says what? They imposed economic policies unto them. You understand? It says, and the king also that came against them from, from the uttermost part of the earth, it says they had discomfited them. You understand? They would conquer and overthrow them so that the rest did give them tribute every year. So they were paying tax to Rome. Okay? Jump down to verse 13. Watch this. Come on. First book, of of First book of Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 11. Read. It was told him, besides, how they destroyed and brought under their dominion all other kingdoms and isles that at any time resisted them. So any country that resisted Rome, guess what they did? They, over, they overcame them. They, they, what, they overpowered them. They overthrew them, those that resisted them. Go ahead. But with their friends and such as relied upon them, they kept enmity. You see what they did? So those that lovingly joined themselves unto Rome, he says they made friendships. Okay, read. And that they had conquered kingdoms both far and nigh, mm -hmm. in so much as all that heard of their name were afraid of them. Were what? Were afraid of them. Were afraid of them. So Rome, when it came into power, it says the nations that did not comply, Rome made sure that they were under subjection and they paid tribute. And the nations were afraid of the Roman Empire. You understand? Go ahead. Also, that whom they would help to a kingdom, those reign, right. and whom again they would, they displace. Come on. Finally, that they were greatly exalted. They were greatly exalted, they were on top. So how did they displace these other nations that did not lovingly join themselves unto them? What did they do? They put sanctions on them. They put embargoes on those countries. You understand? So that's what's going on now. That's what Biden is promising uh, that he will do to Putin if he invades Ukraine. You understand? That's, this, that's, the, that's the consequences that they are promising Russia that Putin is going to face. But if you notice in the G7, China is not there. India is not there. Russia is not there, obviously. Russia was kicked out. But Russia and China, they have friendships. Okay, and America does not like that friendship. But remember, those are part of the Asian countries. Russia, China, they are under Asia. They're still Asia. Those are all the Asian countries. You understand? Russia and China. But America wants to be involved. The reason why I say Asia, they partake of their partakers of the hope of Babylon is because they want to be like America militarily. When you look at Russia, Russia wants to be like America. In, but in the military sense. China wants to be like America in the technological sense. That's why you see your gadgets, 
your video games and so forth, video game console made from China, made in China, made in Taiwan, so on and so forth. So in technology, in terms of um, technology, gadgets and all that, China wants to be like America. In terms of military, Russia wants to be like America. You understand? So, but what I'm showing you is, yes, this is talk about the Roman Empire, but guess what? The Roman Empire, America is an extension of ancient Rome. They are an extension of that. Watch this. Give me that in Revelation 13, just to prove what I'm saying. They are an extension of America. They are an extension of ancient Rome. Okay. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13, start at verse 11. Book of Revelations, chapter 13, verse 11. Read. Right. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he had two horns like a lamb, and Come his face like a dragon. So now this is uh, this is what America now. This goes into America. Okay, the beast. Is there two horns like a lamb and speak as a dragon? Because they've got a two, uh, they've got a they've got a dual kingdom. Oh, you understand America. They've got republicanism and they've got democrat. So democratic and republicanism. That's what they have. So that's the attribute they take they took from ancient Persia. Because you had Persia and Media, which what what? Which was a dual kingdom. So America took that attribute. And he says he spake as a dragon because they said, God bless America. When they don't really talk about the Mosai, they are talking about gold, oil, and drugs. Go ahead. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. Stop right there. He says, America exercises all the, all the power of the first beast before him. Yes, he's gonna tell you what he's gonna he's gonna make it clear, but in a parable form, what he's talking about. Go ahead. And cause the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose mm -hmm. deadly wound was healed. That's the key right there. He says to cause the whole earth, you understand, and all that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. What is he talking about? He's talking about the fall of Rome because Rome fell in 193 AD. So he says he's exercising the power of the first beast before him whose deadly wound was healed because Rome fell in 193 AD. When was Rome healed? When Rome came back during the Renaissance, you understand, in 1453. Okay? That's what he's talking about. That's what he's going into. Is going into what? The white man coming back into power in the earth. They started with Constantinople, Rome, Spain, you understand? And they started to conquer all these other nations and they became those seven years of the dragon. And America came out of what? Came out of Great Britain in 1776. You understand? So that's what this is going into here. So America is the extension of that ancient Roman Empire. Okay? The same thing. Nothing has changed. Now they are just more powerful than the first beast, but it's still part of the first beast, Rome. Okay? So is 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 actually is making reference to that. So what we're reading here in first Maccabees 8 is what Rome did, is what America is doing today. That's how America is able to control and run these nations with the iron fist because they have power. Okay. But the most high God is, te is teaching us that he is, whatever, whatever America is planning to do, whatever Russia is planning to do, whatever China is planning to do, the Lord is says, I'm going to make sure that all these nations, they're going to pay for what they've done, which is what? The evil that they've done to us, the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Watch this. Mm. <laughs> This is India Russia expand cooperation and coordinate. This is records 28 moves in during Modi Putin summit.
is a boost to defense ties with 10 year cooperation program. Tiger says to expand bilateral trade and investments. Defining the first Modi Putin meeting in two years, India, Russia, signed record 28 deals. Moses inked across sectors, including trade, energy, culture, intellectual property, and education. New Delhi and Moscow also signed a program of cooperation in defense for the next 10 years. Hmm. Defense contract. In addition, the two sides concluded a deal for India's procurement of 600,000 AK-200 AK assault rifles. Like two or three as well, right? The AK-203 rifles are to be pro procured through the joint venture Indo-Russia Rifles Private Limited. The visit of uh, President Putin is short. Uh, but nonetheless highly productive, highly substantive. Uh, we, there were excellent discussions between the two leaders uh, and uh, much of this will be reflected in the outcome document that is expected to be issued shortly. Uh, the uh, visit concluded in a joint statement uh, titled India-Russia Partnership for Peace, Progress and Prosperity. Mm. Uh, the joint statement captures uh, the state and future potential of our relationship. Uh, in all, a uh, record number of 28 agreements or MOUs were concluded during this visit. Uh, these agreements were both government to government as well as business to business, uh, including involving our public sector units uh, in both countries. Uh, the agreements uh, cover a very wide range of sectors, including trade, energy, culture, intellectual property, accountancy, cyber attacks in the banking mm. sector, manpower, uh, geological exploration, survey, education, etc. Uh, India and Russia have also signed a program of cooperation in the field of defense for the next 10 years. 20 so they signed, a con they, they, signed, they signed a defense contract with Russia. That means that Russia will be able to provide them with what? With missiles, okay? Nuclear capability. Nuclear, Russia will be able to provide, will, will be able to provide India with nuclear capability as well. And America obviously will not be happy about that, okay? 21 to 2031, uh, the diversity of agreements and MOU signed today uh, shows the multifaceted nature of our bilateral partnership. Target, uh, target said to increase bilateral trade to 80 billion US dollars and bilateral investment to 50 billion by 2025. Economic cooperation on agenda, what Modi Putin discussed. Long-term procurement of essential commodities from Russia, see that? Elimination of trade barriers. What is that talking about? Talk about America primarily. You understand? Because America is always in the middle trying to decide, dictate who can deal, who, which country can do business with other countries. They dictate that. <music> Connectivity options such as the International North-South Trade Corridor. Cooperation on energy, inland waterways, 
shipbuilding, fertilizer, steel, etc. The enhancing bilateral trade uh, and investments figured prominently in the talks. Uh, this year we have noticed an encouraging trend of growth in our trade compared to last year when there was a downturn owing to the uh, COVID pandemic. Um, the, uh, obviously, um, I think both sides are looking forward to continued uh, increase in the trade and investment trajectory. Uh, some very ambitious targets have been set and we are, I think, well on our way to achieving those both in the trade and investment side. In his opening remarks at the summit, Modi said India-Russia friendship has remained a constant. Putin, in his opening address, described India as a great power and a time-tested friend. Okay, all praises to the most high. They definitely must go to war. Let's see. There's another country that is also allying with Russia. Let's see. That the United States does not like. Now, Russia and China, what are they up to? There's a flurry of diplomacy happening between Moscow and Beijing. Presidents Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping met virtually today. They were waving and smiling like high school buddies. But is there more to this relationship? Is it only about taking on the U.S. or does the China-Russia relationship have other meaningful intentions? The chemistry is certainly there. Both Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping know how to put on a show. You may remember their famous ice cream date. Or the time Xi Jinping called the Russian president his best friend. Well, that yeah, is amazing how whenever these rival nations come together, America always portrays them in a negative light. You understand? Now they had to actually put this on the news that they had an ice cream date. You cannot make this stuff up. Okay. Chemistry was on full display today. Take a look. Dear President Xi Jinping, dear friend, I am glad to see you. I am greeting you. I am glad to have a chance to get in touch with the direct video call. This allows us to thoroughly discuss Russian-Chinese relations, full-scale partnership and strategic interaction. Dear friend, dear President Xi Jinping, next February I expect we can finally meet in person in Beijing so it says, uh, she calls for joint security policy. China keen to set up a military alliance with China. Hmm. We have agreed. We will hold talks. With Russia, because I think that's what they meant to say. China and Russia holding military drills, joint patrols. And then participate in the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympic Games. I'm grateful for your invitation to attend this landmark event. This equation was never in doubt. Both Russia and China agree on most foreign policy issues on Iran, on Syria, on Venezuela, and on North Korea. Bilateral trade is also growing. It is expected to reach $200 billion by 2024. I know it sounds like a perfect relationship. The leaders love each other, the foreign policies align, and trade is growing. But you know what? No relationship is perfect. Both Russia and China want more. They want a military partnership. Xi Jinping pitched this proposal during the talks. He said Russia and China must jointly safeguard each other's security interests. How did Vladimir Putin respond? Well, last year he said such a prospect cannot be ruled out, and since then things have moved in this direction. Just look at the timeline. In August, Russia and China held joint military drills. For the first time, Russian soldiers trained on Chinese soil. October, 10 Russian and Chinese warships sailed through the Sea of Japan, again unprecedented. November, four Chinese and Russian bombers flew over the East China Sea. South Korea ended up scrambling jets in response. In the same month, China and Russia also signed a roadmap for military cooperation. It runs from 2021 to 2025. 
So the trajectory is clear. Russian and Chinese militaries are joining hands. We're seeing more joint drills, more joint patrols. But all of this is happening. Because we know they're going to try to make it seem like this thing is not going to work. Read that in 2nd Ezra. I'm going to show you this thing is going to work. 2nd Ezra 15 verse 28. Watch this. Because and if you keep watching the, 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 the news, this news article, this news um, channel, She'll be saying, no, it's not going to work out and so forth. But I want to show you here, that's not correct according to the scriptures. Read that. Second Ezra 15, verse 28. Second book of Esther, chapter 15, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Behold, an horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east. That's what we're seeing here. We're seeing a horrible vision. This is a horrible vision from the perspective of the West. From the West, which is America, it is a horrible vision. Why? Because it's appearing from the East. Because what's happening over there? It's, the, it's, it's in, in the East. Because you see Russia, you see India, you see China. They are all coming together to work together. You understand? I mean, China and Russia, they are taking, they are taking their alliance to the next level, where even their military, they are what? They are doing drills together. That's a horrible vision because that's preparation for war. You understand? That's a rumor of war. This is a build up to that, to that war that is going to pop off for our benefit. Read that thing again. Second book of Esther, chapter 15, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Behold, an horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east. Jump down to verse 32. Second book of Esther, chapter 15, verse 32. Go ahead. Then these shall be troubled and keep silence through their power and shall flee. You see what he's saying? He says, these shall be troubled and keep silence through their power and shall flee. So what is he saying? He says, listen, the nations are going to be troubled because that's why now America is uncomfortable. Now America is trying to pull India in, Okay. Jump down to verse 34 now. Watch this. Second book of Esther, chapter 15, verse 34. Behold clouds from the east and from, from the, the north. Way? Behold clouds from the east. From the east. From the east, like we read in verse 28, is clouds from the east. This clouds is not talk about the clouds that you see in the sky. No, this goes into what? It goes into um, not the chariots of the Mosai. This is going into what they are military war planes. That's what it says clouds from the east. He's talking about the militaries of the earth here. They are war machines, aerial warfare. Go ahead. And from the north. And from the north, this is going into North America. Go ahead. And to the south. And unto the south. That goes into what? That goes into South China. Go ahead. And they are very horrible to look upon. Go ahead. Full of wrath and storm. This is war. Go ahead. They shall smite one upon another. Because these nations are going to go to war with each other, like we read in verse 20. Go ahead. And they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Even their own star. That goes into their missiles and their satellites. Come on. And blood shall be from the sword unto the belly. Meaning what? There's going to be a lot of killing. Go ahead. And doing of men unto the camel. And the what? And dung of men unto the camels. Unto the camels how? The dung of men is talking about their guts. The guts of men unto the camels how? Go ahead. And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon the earth. Read. And they that see the wrath shall be afraid. Come on. And trembling shall come upon them. Come on. And then shall they come great storms from the south and from the north. And other parts from the west. Read. And strong winds shall arise from the east. And shall open it, and the cloud which he, which he raised up in wrath 
and the star stood to cause fear toward the east and west wind shall be destroyed. So now he's going into the militaries of the, of the earth coming together for war. That's what this is going into. These winds is talking about the militaries of the earth, of these nations that are prepared to go to war. Read. The great and mighty clouds shall be lifted up full of wrath. The, the mighty the, clouds goes into their planes. They are war machines, aerial warfare. Go ahead. And the star that that they may, may make all the earth afraid. Mm -hmm. And them that dwell therein. And they shall pour and they shall and they shall pour out every high and eminent place. They shall pour out over every high and eminent place. And horrible star. This goes into their miss the missiles now, because these war machines, these aerial war planes, they are able to what? They are able to carry nuclear. They they are able to carry nuclear missiles. Okay, and they can launch nuclear missiles. Go ahead. Fire and hail, and mm -hmm. flying swords. Flying sword that goes into smaller missiles. Read. And many waters. Mm hmm that all fields may be full and all rivers with the abundance of great waters. So now this goes into nations going to war and destroying one another, okay? So what, the, what, what, what Ezra is teaching us here is what is the beginning of World War III. But what you are seeing now with all these nations, Russia, China, India, okay, G7, all these nations, these, these, are, these are rumors of wars. That's what you are seeing right now. You understand? They have not popped it off yet, but you're seeing, you're seeing little smaller wars. You are seeing the preparation of the main war that's coming. So basically what you are seeing is the preparation of the main war that everybody is talking about, that everybody is being talking about since the beginning. The, the great and final war, the war of Armageddon. Okay? That's what this is going into. So go back to look now. Let's go back to where we started. Luke 21. Okay. Luke chapter 21. Read verse 9 and 10. The book of Luke chapter 21 verse 9. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Go ahead. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So that's what you are seeing right now. Nations are rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Why? For the what? For the benefit of the 12 tribes of Israel. To benefit us that they have in captivity. You understand? So before the Lord returns, these things must come to pass. But another one that I want to deal with, not tonight, but Lord's will, okay, sometime during the week. Read verse 16. You see this one right here? Yeah, this is a big one. Read verse 16. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 16. Go ahead. And ye shall be betrayed, both by parents and brethren. Stop right there. It says, and ye shall be betrayed, both by parents and brethren. That's some heavy stuff right there. He says, you are going to be betrayed by parents and brethren. Hmm. Go ahead. And kinsfolks and friends. Hmm. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. So this, these things must happen before the Lord returns. These things right here, this, was, well, this must happen before the Lord returns. Okay. The brother might be smiling with you now. Tomorrow, he's going to be the one that is going to deliver you up to be put to death. Okay. These are things that will happen. Okay. Because I'm already seeing some red flags here. I'm really concerned about that thing. But you know, Tuesday is the day we discuss these things. Until the demon pops out. But you see here, verse 16, read again. Let me put the spirit out there. Of Luke chapter 21, verse 16. Go ahead. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren. Mm. 
and kinsfolks and friends. Amen. Come on. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. Now that's heavy, right? That's some heavy stuff right there. So Christ is telling us these are things that are going to happen before he returns. Read Matthew 24. Mm. Matthew chapter 24. Read verse 9. Watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 9. Wait. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted mm. and shall kill you. Come on. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You see that thing? It says, they shall be, they shall, he says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Watch this, verse 10. Come on. And then shall many be offended mm. and shall betray one another. Come on. And shall hate one another. This is not talking about in the world. Talk about in the truth. It says, and then shall, ma there shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. You see, brothers be offended. Uh -huh. Those are the Judases now, those ones. They are the ones that are going to betray you. They are the ones that are going to deliver you up to be afflicted. They are the ones that are going to hate your guts. Okay? Brothers that are self-willed. Self-willed brothers, yes, they fall under this category right here. Okay? Those are the dangerous ones. You have to watch. Yeah, we have to watch for those type of Negroes. Self-willed brothers, they fall under this category right here. You understand? So that's what Christ is saying right there. Okay. Okay. I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the most high. All praises. Let's break bread. Okay. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, which he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye, as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.